All right, number 11, this is the last problem and it's pretty long. Okay, a couple things to point out. We're given a function um, that includes sine, so that's interesting. The next thing is they're giving us a very specific domain where zero, we're looking at zero to two pi. So we are in radians, so every answer needs to be in radians. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. So part I says solve the equation for f of x equals 2. Okay, f of x equals 2 is not the same as f of 2. That is not correct. So do not substitute 2 for x here because that is not the same thing. So if I wanted to rewrite this in a different notation, I could replace this part of our function with f of x because that's really what it means in a in, uh, I guess, in a more mathematically correct way, if you will. Okay, at this point, f of x equals 2. So this is f of x. The whole thing's equal to 2, so I'm subbing 2 in. And now I'm going to solve for the sine of x. Uh, gracious. Okay, this pen. Okay, so I'm going to start by subtracting 4 from both sides. And I end up with negative 2 equals negative 3. I'd just like to point out at this point that I have a negative in front of my sine of x, which means this curve is um, reflected over the x-axis. So uh, we'll need to know that probably later in the problem. OK, so 2 thirds equals the sine of x. And now I'm just going to take the arc sine of the sides. OK, so the arc sine of 2 thirds to x and then calculator. So the arc sine of two thirds. Oh, and I need to change this to radians. There we go. Equals 0.73. Okay, now the question is, is there a secondary value? So sine has a uh, has a symmetry, right? Like um, a property that says sine minus x gives you another value within that same um, part of the curve. So that's what we need to find. So let's go ahead and go back to the calculator. And hopefully it has a pi button. There it is. We're going to say pi minus 0.73. We get 2.41. Okay, so x also equals 2.41, and 2.41 is definitely smaller than 2 pi, because 2 pi is greater than 6. Okay, so the question is, the period of this one was 2 pi, so if I add 2 pi to any of these, do I stay within our interval? The answer is no, because they're all going to put us over, um, over our interval of 2 pi if we add 2 pi to either of these. So these are our two answers. So I set up a grid for us because part two says that we are supposed to be sketching the graph of y equals f of x. So what you're going to notice about my grid is I have plotted uh, the main things that I need. So I know what this graph is going to look like just because I know sine functions quite well. Um, so you may not know the y-axis yet, but I'm going to show you a trick for doing that. Okay, so here's what you should remember in trig. If there is no horizontal movement, that would be a horizontal um, translation or a change in the frequency, we're always going to plot the big five. That would be zero, half pi, pi, three halves pi, two pi. That's equivalent in degrees to zero, 90, 180, 270, and 360. Those are the big stopping points on the unit circle, and that's where we get the integers out. Um, which is what we want. That that makes us very accurate in our plotting. Okay, so the way I know there's no horizontal change here is if I look at what's inside of the sine part of our equation, it's just x. So this is where we would see a frequency. So if x was being multiplied by something within sine, that would be a frequency change and that affects the period. If x was being added or subtracted to something or from something, that would also indicate a, a a horizontal translation, and it could perhaps be both. 
there's nothing going on here. So that's again how I know that I am going to use these values. So one of the ways to approach this problem is to just plug in all of these values for x if you wanted to. I kind of think that's tedious, but whatever, you would get the right value. Okay. Um, the other way to do this is to kind of figure out what your new minimum and maximum is, and based on your knowledge of what sine graphs look like, just piece it together there. Um, what I will say also is that you may notice that I am only in going to from 0 to 2 pi, and that's because that's what they told me. Don't waste your time. You don't have time on this test to be drawing more than what you need to, so don't. Draw what they ask you to. So here's how I would graph this. Um, and then I'll show you a second technique. I know that normally um, my sine wave is divided into two pieces, one that goes from 0 to 1 and one that goes from 0 to negative 1. 0 is kind of that middle line. Since this graph has been shifted up 4 units, I know that 4 is that new middle line, and I'm just going to put a dashed line here. Okay. So sine normally starts at 0 and then goes up. So that means that wherever sine would normally be 0, it's going to be 4. Okay, So it goes up to 1 at negative pi and then it goes back to 0 at pi. Okay, So again, everywhere it was 0, it's now 4. goes down to negative 1, right? At 3 halves pi and then at 2 pi it pops back up to 0. So there we go. Okay, What's weird about this graph is that it's reflected and we know it's reflected because there's a negative in front of uh, the amplitude. In this case the amplitude is 3 or sine of x is being multiplied by a negative at some point. That means that where I would normally go up this way, I'm going to be reflecting downward this way. Okay, the frequency, or the frequency, the amplitude, not the frequency, tells me what, how big of a stretch from that line I have. I have a three unit stretch, so I'm going to be going down one, two, three. Okay, so it's reflected and I'm going down three. On three halves pi, that means I'm going to be going up three. Okay, so I'm going up to 7. So I'm going to try to draw this curve as best I can with this tablet. They're looking that it's a beautiful curve. Okay, so it's going to be going down there, and then it's going to be going up here. Okay, so that's what this graph should look like. If I were doing this on paper, it would look better. Um, but I'm not. So part 3 says find the set of values of k for which the equations f of x equals k has no solutions. So basically they are testing your knowledge of your sine and cosine, well in this case sine functions, but trig functions in general. So basically what we know about this sine wave, it's going to oscillate between 1 and 7 forever till in positive infinity to negative infinity. It just is going to re be repeating this wave over and over and over again. So when we say there's no solutions, what we're looking for is any value outside of this range of 1 to 7 has no solutions. So I'm not even going to do any math, if you will. There's nothing that we need to do other than look at our graph. So when k is less than 1, and it has to be a less than, because at 1 there is a value, there is a solution. There's no solution, because our graph doesn't exist when k is less than 1. When k is greater than 7, there is also no solution because 7 is as high as our graph goes. So think about when you just have sine of x in your calculator, um, that if you put, um, if you try to solve for a value that's greater than 1, you get an error. This question is just asking where are you going to find errors for this function? Okay, so with sine of x, if you try to put the sine of x equals 2, you'll get an error. Or the sine of x equals negative 10, you get an error because nothing exists. There's no solutions. So anything greater or greater than or less than your maximum point on your graph or your minimum point will yield a no solution for sine, cosine, for sine, cosine. Okay? So just remember that. So this wasn't even a math question. It was almost in terms of solving. It was a reading your graph. Okay, also reading your graph question, it says for the function g of, uh, basically g of x equals 4 minus 3 sine of x is defined for this domain where we are looking from only half pi. So we're looking, 
we're looking from here um, to whatever A is, and it's inclusive of both of those points. They want us to state the largest value of G, uh, uh, the largest value of A for which G has an inverse. So basically, when they say an inverse, we need to have a 1-1 one, one inverse going on, otherwise it's not a function, okay? Because it says the function G. So, basically, we're looking to the point where there are no repeating values, and up to 3 halves pi, nothing repeats. But as soon as we drop back, this is really crooked line, as soon as we drop down here, we now have repeated values. So, again, this is testing your knowledge of functions rather than your rather than your 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 ability to do like equations, calculations, type of things. So a is going to be three halves pi, okay? Because it's a function until you pass three halves pi. As long as you're starting with half pi, if you're starting somewhere else, it would be different. So there's that one. And now it says for this value of a, find the value of the inverse of the find the value of the inverse of g of 3. Okay, so basically um, we're looking for where 3 happens on the curve in this domain. So if I go ahead and I do this like so, I can kind of see where 3 is going to happen happening like here for y. And you're probably thinking, why am I looking at y? Well, when the inverse is giving me an x-coordinate, that means I can look at the original graph at y, because an inverse is just a simply a swap of x and y. So we know the answer has to be somewhere between half and pi. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out what that is. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this y equals 4 minus 3 sine of x. Okay. Well, and I'm not even going to invert this because I don't have to. Since x is 3 here, I'm going to make y 3 here. And I'm going to solve. That's like the fastest way. This is only a two-point question, so two-point questions usually are not that time-consuming. So I end up with negative 1 equals negative 3 sine of x. So 1 third dividing by negative 3 equals the sine of x. So let's go over to my calculator and I'm going to take the arc sine. And we're still in radians. So the arc sine of a third equals 0.34. Where's my graph? Here we go. 0.34, but the problem is 0.34 is less than half pi. So that can't be a solution, okay, because that's over here. So I'm going to go back to my calculator, and I'm going to um, do my pi minus 0.34. And I get 2.8, so that's my value of symmetry. So 2.8 is less than pi, but it's greater than half pi. So I think that g of negative 1 of 3 is equal to 2.8. All right, so that is v. And I'm stopping here. Normally, I would want to test for symmetry, but since I already have the symmetry out here at this curve, uh, it wasn't within our value, and I'm stopping at 3 halves pi, so there's no way I'm going to have another value, so I'm not even going to test for it. So, there you go. That is number 11.